that will be led by my good friend, Julian uh, Lindley French. Uh, he is both a personal but also a good friend of the committee. He's a leading strategist, advisor and author with 11 books uh, published, many articles and a highly interesting blog too. <laughs> 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 Julian is British and is very happy that we are not discussing uh, Brexit in this conference. <laughs> I will leave the panel to you uh, and we will uh, looking forward to see, hear the discussion and also all the interventions. Please, Julian. Thank you, Kate. My dear friend, Kate. Great to be here. I'd love to see a lot of friends here at, uh, at uh, Leanne Collin. Um, many years ago, when I was young and strikingly handsome, um, I attended a dinner in Hong Kong where I was based with the, uh, the famous uh, governor, Jock the Sock Macklehose. I kid you not. Great name. And uh, he, um, we had a guest, a very senior American officer. And over the dinner, at the time, we were discussing China. And we had 3,000 Royal Marines and Gurkhas defending Hong Kong. And over the border, there were some 800,000 PLA. It was a, what we thought was a fair balance. Um, <laughs> And the admiral, the American admiral at one point asked uh, Jock, he said, uh, so governor, what would you do in the event of a, of a Chinese incursion? And uh, Jock thought about this for a moment. He said, well, <clears throat> we have two options. Option one would be a withdrawal and just carried on eating. Didn't say anything. Silence for 45 seconds or so. Until the admiral said, and your second option, governor? Oh, an extremely rapid withdrawal. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, we, can, uh, we Europeans can uh, debate in t Chinese intent until the American cows go home. But I think the Admiral set the right tone. If we are truly to consider the implications of future China and Chinese power for transatlantic relations, for the Americans, and indeed for the alliance of which the Americans are a part, we have to consider capability. And, by the way, we have to consider something that we Europeans find very difficult in this age. We have to consider the worst case. What could be the worst case and its implications of Chinese power for NATO and our own defence assumptions? Something that I think too many of our political leaders uh, across Europe, and Britain's about to undertake a big defence review, which obviously shall play a mod modest role, uh, be, need to begin to grip. The panel, as you can see, addressed two fundamental questions that Kate has set. Is China's presence in Europe and the Arctic a case for NATO? And if so, how should NATO respond to China's increased interest in the region? Now, to discuss this, I'm honoured to chair a very distinguished panel. Uh, bios are in the programme, Andrew Scoble. <laughs> My old friend, uh, General Ben Hodges, uh, Vice Admiral Hervé Blejean of NATO, and Camilla Sorensen. Uh, and then, once they've presented, we will open the floor to a debate. Now, team, I am a ruthless and utterly corrupt chairman. So, ten minutes maximum, and I'll give you a warning after eight, so that we maintain momentum and uh, deliver on the objectives of the session. My aim when we leave here, is to have a far better understanding of China's military capacity and strategy and some sense of the choices, particularly that we NATO Europeans face, in contending with the challenge that raises. So, with that in mind, in order of programme, Andrew, sir, the floor is yours. <laughs> 